Hello, everybody. Now, in this next section, what I want to do is show you another really unique aspect of Dremio and its support for Apache Iceberg. Now, Apache Iceberg is a table format. Essentially, what it does, it allows you to have data that's on your data lake, which is typically a storage with files, but be able to create tables that work like data warehouse-like tables and have the same kind of guarantees that data warehouse tables have uh, pretty easily. But not only that, um, right now we have a particular Iceberg catalog called Nessie connected to our um, to our Dremio instance that gives us an extra feature called Git for data. And I want to demonstrate all of this real quick. So let me just get rid of all these tabs. Okay. So first off, let's just show you that when you have an Iceberg table, you get extra set of powers. So up till now, we've just connected external data sources and we're able to read and query those data sources and create views on those data sources. But at that point, no, we never wrote any data. So we never actually created any physical data. Now with Dremio, when it comes to Iceberg, you do get full read write support. So now you can actually write data. This can be really useful if you have data sets that are maybe in CSV and you would rather have them in Iceberg for performance reasons, which we'll demonstrate in a moment. So in this case, first let's just show you how I could create a table. I can say, hey, I want to create a table. This would be in my lake house source because that was our Nessie, that was our Nessie connection. So I'm going to say, hey, in lake house dot names, and I want to create a table that has a field called name, and that is a varchar. Keep it real simple. And then in that table, we're going to create a table. Uh, uh, insert into a lake house dot names values we'll just insert my name and then we'll query that table select star from lake house dot names okay so we'll run this series of queries so Jeremy is now going to go create that table which is already done now it's going to insert the record into the table and then query the table so when I run multiple queries like this, you see that each query gets its own tab, which is really nice. Okay, so I can see that, hey, I got the result, I have the one table. But now, just to confirm that this table actually like physically exists, I can head over to where Minio was set up, and I can take a look at my data lake house bucket, and I can see, look, there's the names table. And there's its metadata, there's its physical parquet data, the table exists. And that's wonderful because now we have a working iceberg table that I can use. Now, to show you another example, oh, actually, even before we do that, I want to show you the Git for Data feature. What I can do is something called Git for Data when you're using specifically a Nessie catalog. So you can use iceberg tables with different catalogs like Hive and uh, AWS Glue, but with specifically with Nessie catalogs or Dremio catalog, which is based on Nessie. Uh, which is Dremio's integrated catalog, uh, which is available in certain editions of Dremio. Uh, what you can do is you can use Git for data. So let me show you an example of this. If you ever use Git for code, Git allows you to create branches so you can isolate work on your code to tag changes to your code so that way you can easily find those changes um, and a variety of those features. You get that with Dremio. So for example, let's say I want to add a couple more names, but I don't want to publish them right away because I want to just double check that I did it right. So what I could do is I can create a branch. So I want to say create a branch example in Lakehouse because that's the catalog. Okay, so I have to specify, hey, which catalog? Because I might have multiple Nessie catalogs connected. Now, now once I do that, I want to use that branch. So that way for the rest of the remaining of the queries, it's going to use that branch until I change it again. So create branch, use branch example in Lakehouse. So now that that catalog is using that branch. So now I can go make changes to the tables in that catalog. So I can say, hey, um, insert into lakehouse.names values Andrew Madsen. Okay. And then I can run this query. So it's going to create the branch, switch over to the branch, and then do the insert of the data. Perfect. So now what I wanted to do is demonstrate that now there's sort of two versions of our table. 
the, the what's called the main branch, the production branch. So as you can see here, next to any messy catalog, there's this like little context picture. So I can now see that there's a main branch and an example branch. So I could actually set that over here, but I'll just do it in the query. So I'll say uh, select all from lakehouse.names at branch main. And then we'll just basically copy that at branch example. Okay. Now it's running those two queries and I can see that, hey, look, if I look at the query on the main branch, it's still just my name because we added the other name after switching over to the other branch. And when I query the other branch, the example branch, I can see those changes. So theoretically, I can make many changes to all my tables in the catalog in this branch without any of my production users seeing them because generally your production queries will hit your main branch. So now, when I look, so I, I can take this time to maybe validate or work, or sometimes I'll just create a branch just to have an experimental playground to experiment with the data and to do things that I don't plan on keeping. Whichever of these is great because you're not creating a copy of the data, you're just creating a different history of changes in the same way Git does. So, but when I do want to combine or publish that data, I can then just say, hey, I want to merge. Um, what is it, merge branch? merge branch example into main in the lake house. So I'm saying, hey, in the lake house catalog, take the example branch and merge that into the main branch. I can then run that. That was successful. And now when I go back and run the query on both branches, I can see that now they're both gonna have the same results. I've published those changes. That's pretty cool, okay. So that's a really neat aspect of working not only with iceberg tables in Dremio, but working with iceberg tables within a Nessie catalog. You get this sort of really uh, nice set of features that can allow you to do some really amazing things in managing your data quality. Now, what I want to do is that in my samples table, or in my samples data, I have this weather data. Okay, so I'm going to format that. It's a CSV file. But the problem with the CSV file is that it's text. There's no schema in the CSV file. So if I query this table, basically you're gonna notice that everything is a string. Okay, ABC, 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 ABC. So what I'm gonna do is use Dremio, and again, I can curate that data. So I'm gonna curate it the way I need it, which is I want the date to be a date field. And then I'm gonna make all these other fields uh, basically float fields. So I'm just gonna pause the video and just kind of do that curation. Okay, cool. So now I have all, so basically now I have a view of this that curates and has everything kind of already as floats. But again, every time I run that view, it's gonna re sort of have to redo that recomputation, that reconversion type. So maybe I wanna save this as a table that already has all these data types. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the view as and just say, hey, um, prepped weather, save the view, sorry, my list view should be there. And now what I can do is I'll create a, go back to my SQL editor, and I'm gonna wanna create an iceberg table of, of this, of that version of the weather data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get rid of this query, and I'm just gonna say create table lakehouse.weather as and do a C TAS query and then say select star from and then I can do is I can actually go over here find the table that I want to copy which is this prep weather table I can literally just drag and drop it right in here okay making that a lot easier okay as you can see here just a lot of little niceties in the the UI here um, but create table lakehouse.weather as and then what this will do is basically take the result of this query and then turn it into an iceberg table in the Lakehouse catalog. Okay, and the nice thing about this is that now you can use Dremio for ingestion work. You can now say, hey, if you wanna run a Lakehouse, uh, an iceberg Lakehouse, 
and you want to move not only query iceberg tables, but you want to move data you have in these other sources over to lake house tables, it becomes really easy because again, you can still do it from one place and using things like CTAS and other syntax that you can use to, to create and insert into iceberg tables using Dremio, you can move that data over. But now that's done. And now I have that table in my lake house and I can query it. It's an iceberg table. So I get the performance benefits of that. All the data is already kind of in the right data type. So life is in, in great shape. I'll see you in the next video.